making his fourth start of the year coming off his first victory but still with no touchdowns to show in 141 pass attempts John. well this is a guy that didn't get a lot of reps in training camp he's learning on the run when he does it right it looks pretty good he's got to do it right more often for five the Cardinals three, to be three. successful hey, face. first down at the 20 Lindley the throw on first down and overthrows Andre Roberts Cardinals offense statistically worst in the league and what is glaring is that they haven't scored a touchdown through the air in more than five games and yeah, that's hard to fathom when you've got a guy like Larry Fitzgerald but if you don't have it at the quarterback position it's tough to get in the end zone the two rookie tackles Nate Potter Bobby Massey they have solidified this line playing better of late second and ten they give it to Beanie Wells and Wells who scored three touchdowns to match a career high against the Lions picks up three and a half with Nick Roach, the middle linebacker, making the tackle. Brian Erlacher again inactive, and Geno Hayes starting at the strong side spot. It'll be third down and six, and a big loss. Henry Melton missing his second game in a row with the clavicle injury. Bears, Levy Smith, and Rod Marinelli, the defensive coordinator, both said they would be aggressive on the rookie quarterback early. Watch for the blitz. Third down and six, and here they come, and the pass is caught by Fitzgerald, and he'll get a first down. Tillman was defending, and a gain of eight yards, and a first down to the 32. Well, they did not disappoint. They came with the blitz, but up front, you see College on Peppers, a good pocket for Ryan Lindley, and he delivers a strike to Larry Fitzgerald, matched up on Charles Tillman, who's having an outstanding season. That's a great matchup today, and there you see Fitzgerald at the top of your picture with Tillman defending him. Marad Stevens howling now, and then the pitch goes to Stevens howling, and he breaks a couple of tackles and just about gets to the line of scrimmage. Israel Adonaje, who is starting in place of Melton up front for the Bears, makes the tackle. The Bears traditionally a somewhat passive defense in terms of they don't blitz that often they do it with their front four today look for them to be a little bit more aggressive in terms of coming after Lindley showing him some different looks pressure by hitting people also by showing them a variety of looks Wells is back in and running back second down and ten in motion is Fitzgerald into the slot and there is a slant to Roberts and a penalty marker is down And they have picked up the flag, so no penalty there. It'll be third down and 10 at the 31-yard line. We saw Lindley against the Rams in his first start, John, and he had a rough game through three interceptions, two for a pick six, and pick six, and really harassed by the Rams' defense. He's got the talent. He can make all the throws. He's got a sense of timing. This is all new to him. We'll see how he responds today. Third down and 10. You know the Bears disguising their defense going underneath to Andre Roberts tackled by Tim Jennings and what a return and a boost for the man who leads the NFL with eight interceptions. Keep in mind we have a strong Chicago contingent here in Arizona and they have already been heard when the team took the field in practice. Here is Cutler avoiding a sack and going deep for Brandon Marshall who is covered by Patrick Peterson downfield. Also there was Kerry Rhodes, the free safety, going deep on the first play. Well, and the pressure's put on by Adrian Peterson, who's going to rush right through Matt Forte. That causes Butler to get to the side. Patrick Peterson and Brandon Marshall, what a tremendous matchup. All day long, Patrick Peterson's going to be shadowing Marshall, who has 107 receptions coming into the day. Second down and 10. Three wide receivers, two on the left. Matt Forte, the running back. Play action for Cutler. And Cutler again going deep, and open was Marshall, but the ball went through him. And the pass incomplete, bringing up third and ten.
see Cutler on the play action. Doesn't really hold the linebackers. He moves around in the pocket and throws errantly to Brandon Marshall. Third down and ten for the Bears. Now the Arizona crowd trying to make it difficult for the Bears offense. Cutler and intended for Alshon Jeffrey. Greg Toller defending and a flag is down. Besides Forte and Marshall, and Jeffrey could be that other weapon they have today. So it's a first down on the 39. And here's Forte going outside. Beats a defender and a good game. Darrell Washington missed the tackle and a gain of eight yards for Forte. Lovey Smith was pretty direct with us and let us know that, hey, some of our star players, our core players, they got to play better. And Matt Forte was one of those guys at the top of the list along with Devin Hester. These are star players that he said got to start playing like stars. Bears have to win this game or face elimination with the Vikings beating Houston early. Second down and two. Here's Forte. And, and may have a first down just shy of the 50 tackled by Dan Williams and it will be a first down for the Bears and talking to Jay Cutler so much of their offense has run through Brandon Marshall which is a good thing he's been outstanding but we asked him who else has to emerge and he said well of course Forte but it's Alshon Jeffrey this kid has so much talent it's just got to come to fruition on the field we think it's this week Second round draft pick out of South Carolina on first down and the pass incomplete intended for Jeffrey. Thrown a bit to the left of him and that'll bring up a second and ten. Not much Jeffrey can do here. An errant throw by Cutler but I like that what they're doing. Everything so far with Jeffrey has been down the field. They're trying to take advantage of his size and jumping ability. Sometimes get him some rhythm throws some quick throws early to get him feeling confident. In his abilities. Second down, and here is Forte. Forte into Arizona territory, picking up a four and a half yards, and Washington with the tackle for Arizona. The Bears, in their five losses, they've lost five out of six, have averaged only 11 points a game. And it's a direct translation to the turnovers, Dick. Early in the year, the Bears were not only taking it away on defense, they were scoring on defense when they weren't providing short fields for the offense. That's dried up, as have the points. Armando Allen is now in the backfield to the right of Cutler, third and six. And Brandon Marshall and Patrick Peterson get tangled up. No flag is thrown. You see this matchup we talked about. It's going to be a classic and just a perfect throw by Jay Cutler. They get caught up at the feet. There should be no penalty. And what concentration by Brandon Marshall going to the ground concentrates all. Wow. Now the Cardinals started from their four yard line. Second possession of the game. Beanie Wells hit by Major Wright, the free safety. And it'll be a loss of one. Second down and 11. Henry Melton has been out for the last couple of weeks and they have sorely missed him. It's Julius Peppers out there creating pressure. Wooten's played all right, but Melton really is the game changer for this Bears defense. We'll see if Adonijay and Paya can get it done without him. For those who watch the Saints and the Cowboys in a thriller, and there is a tackle made and a fumble recovery by Zach Bowman and a touchdown for the Bears on the handoff to Beanie Wells he lost it and Brian Erlacher congratulating the team as it comes off the field the Bears take the lead you see the exchange and Beanie Wells legs just go out from underneath him he loses the football good exchange by Lindley and Beanie Wells but that leg gets caught up underneath don't know what happened right there but Bowman there to make the play kind of an odd play for Beanie Wells got to hang on to the football 
Zach Bowman says, thank you, Beanie. I'll take it. Patrick Peterson is in the slot to the right on first down at the 16. And the pass is caught by Peterson. And out of bounds he goes after picking up about five yards. And talking to him the other day, he says, love to play offense as I did in high school as a quarterback, receiver, or what have you. And there you see the Bears' defense, no question that uh, the takeaways has been the key for them. It starts up front with guys like Julius Peppers, Lance Brigg have, having an outstanding season as a weak side linebacker. These two corners, they will get after you, get that ball away from you. Six yards on first down, and this pass is up in the air, and it's intercepted by Chris Conte, the free safety. And a flag is down back at the 33, and Conte... That's going to come back. It looks like they're going to get Jennings on P.I. He was covering Larry Fitzgerald. William Powell is now in the backfield for the Cardinals. First and 10 on the 31. And here is Powell off the left side. And Powell will pick up three yards. Lance Briggs making the stop for the Bears. And it's fun watching Lance Briggs play the linebacker position. I played with a guy in Tampa named Derek Brooks that wore the number 55. And Lance Briggs does so many things that are reminiscent of Derek Brooks. They're great instinctive linebackers that can cover a lot of ground in a hurry, as Pal just learned. Second down and eight, Beanie Wells back in the backfield. Big year for Lance Briggs. Maybe one of his best ever. Pass is caught by the tight end, Jeff King. And King will get it out to the 35, where Briggs again makes the tackle. He gets two yards there. What makes Lance so such a good football player is that he's complete. He's a big man going 240 pounds. You see the way he covers ground. And then the great players, they finish when they do cover that ground. It's exactly what he does on Jeff King. Third down and seven. Fitzgerald now being shadowed by Kelvin Hayden. Slot left, Hayden the nickel back. Lindley in trouble, and Lindley goes down at the 25. Julius Peppers with the first sack of the game. Nine and a half on the year for Peppers, who has had a history of playing well against the Cardinals. Well, you're going to see Peppers come off the edge. And this is a big-time matchup for Jake Potter, who's played well. But you're going up against possibly a future Hall of Famer in Julius Peppers. Jake Cutler has his team on the 16. Very good. Butler still looking for a receiver, and down he goes. He'll lose a yard, first sack of the game, and Calais Campbell coming off. But Ken Wisenhunt said, best game he's played all year, loss of one. Well, Calais Campbell's a guy that can take over a football game, and you see all the attention Brandon Marshall's going to get. But when you've got a guy like Calais Campbell up front playing like that, Ken Wisenhunt said, that's the guy that we saw last week and we're seeing today that we signed to a big contract. We need to see more of it from Calais Campbell. Second and 11, Cutler is still looking for his first completion. 0 for 4 thus far. And Cutler trying to get it to Brandon Marshall, covered by Peterson, out of bounds, third and 11. Here's the matchup we've been talking about all day. You're talking about two of the finest players in the league at their position. Tremendous skilled athletes. You'll see plenty of this today. Ray Horton will continue to dial up the pressures on Jay Cutler and the Bears. And Calais Campbell says, we're coming back. This is the strength of this Cardinal team. Cutler is 0 for 5. Four passes thrown towards Marshall. Third and 11 from the 15. Cutler drills it incomplete. Again, trying to get it to Brandon Marshall. Incomplete. And fourth down coming up. 21 that cost the Cardinals 20 yards and ended up to be a 64 yard punt because Peterson was taken out of the play. Here's Lindley, and the pass is caught by Michael Floyd. 
The number one pick out of Notre Dame gets 14 yards, first down to the 35. There's Peterson, who is on the bike, and Weems, who made a sensational play. Absolutely. Eddie. You look at that last pass by Ryan Lindley. Those are the type of throws when I'm standing up here. That looks like a guy who could play at the NFL at a high level, but he's got to do it more consistently, and the Bears are going to make that tough on him. Loading the line of scrimmage right now. Here is Laron Stevens howling, and howling gets four yards, and right now let's check in with Patrick O'Neill in a game break. All right, Dick, well, the Ravens off to a quick start versus the Giants, and Joe Flacco is on his game, and Torrey Smith, his favorite target. This one going 43 yards down at the one would lead to Joe Flacco, quarterback sneak. 14 to nothing, Baltimore over the Giants. Baltimore would clinch the AFC North with a victory today. Dick and John. All right, Patrick, and of course a giant loss would help the Chicago Bears. Vital. Second down and seven. And this pass to the 45 to Fitzgerald. He makes the catch. His second reception of the game and a first down. Here's another one. You're going to see Larry Fitzgerald working on Charles Tillman. Not a really big window, but, but Ryan Lindley throws a strike to Larry Fitzgerald. Only where Fitzgerald, those are good throws. Good start for Ryan Lindley to this game. 17 yard pickup there, so Lindley completing two in a row now has hit on six out of eight for 50 yards. First down at the Bear 45. Stevens howling, and he'll get knocked back in a loss of one. Jennifer Hale has a report on Patrick Peterson, who was shaken up earlier. Jen. Yeah, Dick, you saw Peterson fighting to get back in this game, riding the stationary bike, but trainers have said he's got a contusion on his right knee, so right now his return is questionable despite what he wants to do mentally. Guys? Well, that's a, you mentioned at the top, uh, how important having these uh, great stars are in returns and secondary people. Well, Patrick Peterson, we've seen him on offense, we've seen him on defense, we've seen him on special teams. He's a guy they cannot afford to lose. Second down, and Lindley's pass, and Fitzgerald with a circus catch at the 26. Tillman and Conte were both there, and 18 yards chunked by the Cardinals. Well, this is the Larry Fitzgerald I'm accustomed. I think we're all accustomed to seeing, and we haven't seen a lot of it this year because of the fact that teams are so intent on taking him out, but more importantly, they haven't had the quarterback to get it to him. As I said, Ryan Lindley sharp today and a smart quarterback because he's throwing the number 11. First down. On the 27. Here is Stevens howling. Maybe picking up a yard. Gerald talking about the Bears two corners Tillman and Jennings he told us flat out well you know what we think of them we just voted on Pro Bowl as a team one and two on our ballots Tim Jennings and Charles Tillman thinks very highly but right now he's taking it to Charles Tillman and of course the patience he has shown with the rookie Lindley as a veteran wide receiver has been very heartening to Ryan Lindley second down and nine play fake and Lindley goes out to Anthony Sherman. And Sherman flagged down. Holding offense number 76. Holding penalty, penalty against Nate Potter. The rookie left tackle will nullify the six-yard pickup. We always talk about the island that cor cornerbacks are in, in this league. How about this island? You're facing speed like Shea McClellan. Those are two guys that played last year on the same college team at Boise State, and Shea McClellan gets the better of his buddy Jake Potter right there. So yeah, Potter at left tackle, and Bobby Massey from Ole Miss, the rookie at right tackle. Second down at 19. Ball back at the 36. Lindley drills it, and Fitzgerald thrown slightly off to the left of Fitzgerald, and now third down and long for Arizona. And a tremendous play by Lance Briggs. We talk about his presence in the middle of the field. He's a big man. He goes 6'1", 245 pounds. You see the athleticism getting his hand up and tipping it away. I'm telling you, 
Lance Briggs is having an all-pro pro bowl. Whatever honor you can think of, he's having that kind of season. Third down and 19. Back on the 36. Cardinals were at the 27. There's a quick pass to Floyd, and Floyd is hit immediately and down at the 32. Fourth down coming up, and Jay Feely will come on to try a field goal. On these quick screens that we're seeing so much in the NFL of, it's important that you rally to the ball. That's one of the fundamental principles of this defense. I played on it. Big men run into the football. Donage does a great job getting Floyd down. 49-yard attempt, Feely. Has missed just three field goal attempts this year, and this kick is good. Jay Feely, who kicked a 61-yarder against Buffalo earlier, and it's now 7-3 Bears lead. Patrick Peterson, who was knocked down on that last punt and suffered a contusion of the right knee, was on the stationary bike. It looks like he's going to get back in there as Devin Hester goes back deep. Jay Feely, who just counted for the field goal and a low kick and on the bounce bobbled by Eric Weems picked up by Weems and bringing it out to the 27 yard line and you'd have to say anyone but Devin Hester on the return as Patrick Peterson comes back into the secondary see Patrick Peterson as I said earlier this is just going to be a classic matchup two big guys that can flat out run going to play a physical battle all day long Patrick Peterson was looking forward to it. Brandon Marshall was looking forward to it. Patrick Peterson finds out that special teams not always so fun. He's back in for the Arizona Cardinals. 31 seconds left in the quarter, and Jay Cutler is 0 for 6 passing. And they're going to run this with Matt Forte up the middle. Forte with a great move. And forced out of bounds. Forte got another. 13 yards with a great move to the left sideline finally brought down by Perry Rhodes out of bounds 36 yards Mike Tice he was asking for more patience from Matt Forte set up your runs but look at Brandon Marshall at the end of the play not a diva wide receiver down doing the dirty work blocking Patrick Peterson extremely great effort by Matt Forte and Brandon Marshall blocking for him we start the second quarter It'll be first and 10 at the 36-yard line. And Matt Forte tackled by Sam Ocho, the outside linebacker, for no gain on the play. This is the third time this year that the roof has been open here. The Cardinals have to be one and one in the previous two. All I know is my man Fred at St. Thomas the Apostle Catholic Church in Phoenix is happy because he says they win every time the roof's open. I don't know if that's right. That's what Fred said. You always like to have an open roof for the next to last game, the penultimate game of the regular season. Second down and 10, and again they go to Forte, and Forte gets a couple, game break time, and Patrick O'Neill. All right, Dick, well, the Giants finally remember what it's like to score touchdowns. The rookie, David Wilson, 14 yards. Giants a bit gimpy at running back with a mod Bradshaw on his knee, so Wilson comes in and delivers a backflip. For emphasis, 14 to 7, Baltimore still on top of the G-Men. Take a job. All right, thank you very much, Patrick. And with the Vikings winning today, the Bears have to win to stay alive. Third down and eight. Two defensive linemen up front for the Cardinals. Cutler still hasn't completed a pass, and he does there to Brandon Marshall. And Peterson is on him, and Marshall makes a difficult catch. And it'll be first and goal Chicago after the 30-yard play. And in a much embattled and criticized offensive line for the Bears does a tremendous job blocking for Jay Cutler. And this is a tremendous throw. Patrick Peterson, you can't cover Brandon Marshall any better. But this is the athleticism that Brandon Marshall, the ability to wiggle your body to turn and catch that. And Bra Jay Cutler says, that a kid, Brandon. Breaks the ice with his first completion. First and goal at the four. Eric Weems is in the game, and here is Forte, and he goes in for the touchdown. The 30-yard pass play to Brandon Marshall, and the first completion for the Bears sets this up. And Matt Forte finding the hole. This is what he did not do last week. 
They had the ball on the one-yard line of the Packers. Holes were there. He didn't get it in. He got called out by his coaches. And he responds today, gets it in the end zone. Great job by Matt Forte. From the 20-yard line, and Beanie Wells picking up a couple on first down. Two minutes gone by here in the second quarter. Only three Bears have touched the ball on offense. They lead 14 to 3. Cutler, Forte, and Marshall. And there is an upset, forget about dejected, a very upset Patrick Peterson. Well, that's what Brandon Marshall can do to people. You do everything that you're supposed to correctly, and he's still going to beat you. Patrick Peterson's a competitor. It matters to him, but he'll be back. Second down and eight. Caught by Fitzgerald and Larry Fitzgerald off to a good start. They went to him early and he is on a roll out to the 40 picking up 18. Well this has been the matchup that Lindley and the Cardinals have been going to and it's tight coverage again but Fitzgerald a big strong man is winning that matchup thus far and Lindley really doing a nice job of delivering these balls and that's the old skinny post you used to see so much of Troy Aikman and Michael Irvin and they're doing it and doing it well here in Arizona. Good start for Larry Fitzgerald. Four catches for 61 yards. And a first down at the 40. William Powell is the tailback. And this pass is deflected. Tipped at the line by Julius Peppers. It'll be second down. See Julius Peppers, such a versatile an excellent football player the inside move getting close but then get that hand up it's a skill that great pass rushers have and Julius Peppers he's exactly that a great pass rusher and a great football player in this league Lindley now 9 of 13 for 91 yards and Peppers having a big year the Bears have been an outstanding defensive unit despite injuries and here is Lindley and Lindley with a difficult throw into the pack to Larod Stevens howling. And Peppers makes the tackle a loss of three yards. That could have been dangerous. Very dangerous. And that's with experience. He'll throw that one in the ground because he threw it into a bunch of bears howling. Julius Peppers almost gets a pick there. But here we have another third and long for the Arizona Cardinals, a team that struggles mightily on third downs. Right now the Bears have the Cardinals right where they want them. With second and third and long. Show a blitz and don't come. And this pass is dropped out on the flat by William Powell. So it'll be fourth down. And it's got to be difficult for a rookie quarterback like Lindley. There's Matt Forte, who scored the four-yard touchdown, but also had the 36-yard run. And, John, you have to say, despite the fact that Jay Cutler has completed only one pass, the Bears have to like the situation they're in right now. Well, this is the start they wanted. Uh, they got to get back to taking the football away, and that's what they do. And when they do that, they score touchdowns. They've done it. Although Cutler's only one and seven, that's what you kind of anticipated. He was going for the attack. He knew the Cardinals were going to pressure. Not going to be a high percentage game, but an explosive game for he and Brandon Marshall. Second down and six. Cutler in the end zone. Flips it out, and it is dropped by Evan Rodriguez, the fullback. But good pressure by Paris Lennon, one of the inside linebackers for the Cardinals. So it's third down and six. See Cutler get the pressure in his face by Paris Lennon. Throws it out to Rodriguez, and that's a catch that he has to make. Well, the Cardinals trying to get back in this game and need to stop here to get good field position if the Bears have to kick. Third and six, and the pass is almost intercepted in and out of Kerry Rhodes' hands. Brandon Marshall was the intended receiver. Would be pivotal in this game. Defensive touchdown for the Bears. Important. Lindley throwing. Incomplete to Rob Hausler, the tight end. Second and ten, and this is an opportunity for the Cardinals down by 11 that you feel they've got to take advantage of. Absolutely, and Rob Hausler's a guy who could be effective in this game. The Bears challenging Lindley 
And the Cardinals trying to stop the run. That means one on one matchups. And Hausler, one of these hybrid wide receiver tight ends, he can run and run fast, has 45 receptions on the year. Most catches in the last four games for Arizona as well. He's been the go to guy with Fitzgerald in this pass. Intended for Stevens Howling. So Lindley, problems with accuracy coming in at 51% as a quarterback and now the Cardinals who are last in the NFL in third downs are faced with a third and ten and their futility on third down is somewhat historic uh, since they've been tracking this the fifth worst in history and I don't know much but I know that's not good <laughs> and it, you can't stay on the field and so you see him moving the ball but if you can't convert on third down you're going to be punting a lot as they have. Third and ten, and overthrowing Andre Roberts and the crowd expressing their displeasure at the Cardinals offense. They let a big opportunity go by the boards with a first down on the Bears 32, so Jay Feely will come in to try another field goal. And that's the inconsistency you've seen with Lindley. At times it can look really good, and then you have a series like that three completely errant throws to wide open wide receivers and that's what the Cardinals have been facing throughout 2012 50 yard attempt and it's a fake and here is Feely with the run and Jay Feely ball goes out of bounds and uh, they needed 10 yards he had a lot more than that to get and Amobi Okoye the Bears take over on downs no gain on that attempt so now on the 32 yard line, here's Matt Forte with a first down and gets into Arizona territory. Peterson was there at the end and a big game for Forte 19. Go back to this fake and you're going to see Charles Tillman coming off the edge. And that's what the Cardinals have seen. But as you said, Dick, you've got 10 yards and you've got guys like Okoye that can run. <laughs> Jay Feely said, I, I'm not going to get it. Let's throw this thing up and see what we can get. At least he threw it. Up in the air and it went out of bounds instead of staying on the field to play. First down after the 19 yard gain at the 49 yard line. And here is Forte again. Forte scored the Bears offensive touchdown from four yards out. And he also has a good gain of 36 yards as well. Picks up two here. And he's already got 82 yards. And as that Bear fan does, well designed beard. Second down and eight after the Chicago timeout. Here is Cutler, and intended for Marshall Peterson on him, and the pass incomplete. Marshall was looking for a flag. <laughs> Sometimes, third and eight on the 47 of Arizona. Cutler has time and throws a knuckleball intended for Marshall. So. Nine of his 11 attempts have been thrown to Marshall. And so fourth down coming up. Down and 10 and Rod Stevens howling. Out to the 16. Picking up four yards. Well, the big problem here is well, not enough people have touched the ball for the Bears. But they're in front and it's the Cardinals that have to get things going. Larry Fitzgerald has caught four passes thus far. Total yards is not that close. Or far away for Arizona at this point. Second down and six. Steven Towling. Back to the line of scrimmage. And Geno Hayes, the former Tampa Bay Buccaneer, making the play. He was inactive uh, against Green Bay. Lovey Smith getting Tim Jennings back along with the Hayes. Henry Melton could be back next week in the regular season finale. In Chicago, they've thought this through and what they're doing right now, they're stacking the line of scrimmage on first and second down and saying, go ahead, Ryan Lindley, beat us. They don't think he can. And then they're setting up these third and longs that the Cardinals haven't been good at all season. Cardinals need six yards. Lindley. Going underneath, and it'll be a first down to William Powell. Major right 
finally makes the play but not before the Cardinals get eight yards and convert their second third down of the game. That's a really nice job by Ryan Lindley there. He's got the protection. He goes through the protect through the progression and slips it out. He said this is one of the challenges in the NFL. In college, you always want to force the ball downfield. Your pride gets in the way. He's learned you can't do that in the NFL. You got to take what they give you. Powell remains in there and a fake to Powell. Lindley stepping up and the pass incomplete through Hausler. And time for a game break, and let's check in with Kurt Menefee this time. Well, the Denver Broncos going for their 10th straight win. Kate Manning looking up on a 10-yard score with Eric Decker. They lead Cleveland 14-3. Please keep in mind, Dick and John, because Houston lost earlier today, Denver can, can still get the number one seed in the AFC. Seems to be all coming around for the Broncos, isn't it? Yes, sir. Last week it was the New England Patriots slipping on that allowed them to grasp that two seed. Great point by Kurt with Houston slipping. That one seed's in reach. Second and ten. And Lindley will go down. Had no chance there. And Adana Jay with the second sack of the game for the Bears. And Adana Jay is one of the guys who's moved inside. We talked about the pressure from Wooten and Peppers on the outside. They didn't have anything up the middle last week. And Adonage stepping up to the challenge as well for the Bears. A little push in the middle that you always need. You know, going back to the Broncos, if uh, Peyton Manning and the Broncos win that game, it'll be the ninth year that Manning has won 12 games or more. Phenomenal record of consistency. Third down and 15. And Lindley's pass caught by Michael Floyd. And he's not going to get away. And Charles Tillman, who's having a brilliant season for the Bears in the secondary, as you mentioned, along with Jennings, makes the tackle. Two-yard gain, and the Cardinals will kick. You get behind the change in the NFL. And you're forced just to throw the football down underneath. Third and 15, the offensive coordinator. Not many plays in the playbook, particularly with a rookie quarterback. They've got to start being more efficient on first and second down. Zastadil with the punt, and it's a short kick. Devin Hester, and it bounces off one of the Bears, and it's picked up and run in by Michael Adams for the touchdown. Deflected off of D.J. Moore, and Adams in stride. Scores for Arizona. They're on the 36 of Chicago. Stevens howling, and he gets about four. Last time the Cardinals had the ball on the 32, it was a field goal try and a fake, and Jay Feely just got back to the line of scrimmage, so Arizona squandered even an attempt for three, and now it is second and seven. And this is where you have to be productive. This is where they've been going backwards, setting up long third downs. Get some positive yards here. Lindley, and it's caught by William Powell. And Tillman makes the tackle, but not before Powell has a first down. To the 23 of the Bears, picking up 10. William Powell doing a nice job as the receiver for the Arizona Cardinals out of the backfield. His second catch of the game. Lindley starting to establish some rhythm again after that bad series he had with three errant throws. On the 23 of the Bears, Lindley gets out of trouble, and the pass is caught inside the 20 by Michael Floyd. Loose ball. And it's recovered by the Cardinals. Michael Floyd had lost the ball, and the Cardinals keep possession. Cardinals who have managed only a field goal against this Bears defense. Here's Powell again, and Powell picks up a yard. Beanie Wells, who had fumbled at the goal line, resulting in a Bear recovery and a touchdown, has seen sparse action since that moment. He has carried four times for a total of three yards, and they've gone more to Stevens Howling, who's carried seven times and now Powell. And here's this third and fourth, productive on first and second. 
But this is where they struggle mightily, 22% on the year. Last in the league, New England first at 64%. Big discrepancy. And here is the fade into the end zone. And it is incomplete. Rob Hausler covered by Chris Conte, the free safety. And Hausler trying to make the one-handed. It's not going to be a high percentage game because of the nature of their defense, but you got to be better than one of 11 at the quarterback position. Bears have no timeouts left. Pass caught by Brandon Marshall. So two completions by Cutler, both to Marshall. He gets seven yards there. As we wind down to the two-minute warning, questionable as to his return. Meanwhile, the Bears have the ball, second and three. Two minutes to go in the first half. And here is Cutler going deep. And the pass is going to be caught by a huff by Alshon Jeffrey. So finally, somebody other than Forte and Marshall figure in the offense, 35 yards into Cardinal territory. And Alshon Jeffrey, they went to him last week, hoping that he would emerge. And last week, it was all the pass interferences, penalties on Jeffrey. Right there, he comes through for Jay Cutler. And there is the flip out to Forte. And Forte winds up three yards shy of a first down. No timeouts remaining, remember, for the Bears. What a tremendous catch by Jeffrey. A great throw by Jay Cutler bringing that ball in. Had no catches against Green Bay last week. Seven-yard game for Forte, second down and three. Here's Cutler, drills it, and the pass caught by Earl Bennett. So Earl Bennett, who is an active the last two, with a concussion makes the key catch at 16 and now other people figuring in the Bears offense it'll be a first down on the 15. And that's important in the middle of the field should be wide open because they pay so much attention to Brandon Marshall outside. Forte gets to the 11. Calais Campbell got a hold with them from behind and he picks up four. Plenty of time for the Bears 33 seconds problem no timeouts they burned the last one on a Questionable challenge by Lovey Smith left them with no timeouts. Second and six. And this pass caught by Marshall for the touchdown. The 11 yard touchdown pass. And Brandon Marshall with his 11th TD reception of the season with 19 seconds remaining. And with no timeouts, the Bears smartly move downfield. Lindley passes complete to Floyd. And a first down. The Cardinals have all three of their timeouts remaining. This is a 12-yard game. Don't forget, the visa hat got hurt. John Skelton didn't get the job done. So Lindley, the rookie, the third stringer, Tough year for quarterbacks in Arizona. Pass caught by Alfonso Smith out of the backfield. And the Cardinals will call a timeout with eight, six seconds remaining. Second and two, six seconds left on the clock. Lindley completes to Laron Bird. And a timeout just in the nick of time with one second remaining in the half getting underway the bears have three men back deep safety and uh, incomplete that'll do it for the half alfonso smith the intended receiver bears won the toss deferred so they get the ball first feely kicking off to devin hester and hester will return from the one devin hester down the sideline breaks a couple of tackles and a terrific return in traffic by Devin Hester as he gets to the 42-yard line. And that's a welcome sight because along with Matt Forte, Lovey Smith said, we need the Devin Hester that we know to emerge. We need him to bust some returns, and he comes close right there. A positive sign for the Chicago Bears. And a start from the 41-yard line, so... He wanted Forte to respond, and he did with a touchdown and a 36-yard run. And Hester with a terrific return of the second-half kickoff. Play action for Cutler, and Cutler has a wide-open Kellen Davis and a first down, and let's check in with Jennifer Hale.
talking to Levy Smith at halftime, he told me that score going into the half was huge, and he believes the reason it was successful was how the Bears spread the ball around. They want to get more playmakers involved this second half. Also look for them to run the ball more, especially with the success Matt Forte is having today. A little bit of a hit for them on defense, though. Safety Chris Conti is now questionable with a hamstring injury, Dick. All right, Jen. Forte averaging 7.7 .7 yards per rush. He's going to have a chance here to add to that. And Forte stopped at the 44 of the Cardinals by Sam Ocho after picking up three. Mike Tice, the offensive coordinator for the Chicago Bears, used to be at Minnesota. As you see, Forte limped gingerly off. That would be a huge loss. But compared Matt Forte to Robert Smith, the guy I played against a lot, and said, He's got to do what Robert did and get more patient at the running back position. Then his speed be can become more of an asset for him. Armando Allen now the running back. And the handoff to Allen looked like a little confusion in the backfield for the Bears to lose a yard with Darrell Washington coming in to stop Allen. We'll go back to the finish of this run by Matt Forte to see if we can see anything in it. If anything, it looks like those ankles got rolled up. Forte battling for extra yards, and that's right ankle. Don't be surprised the right ankle or right foot. Forte coming in needing 97 yards for his third career 1,000-yard season. And here is Cutler getting a pass rush, and getting a piece of it was Calais Campbell. Matt Forte, remember Michael Bush was put on IR with a rib injury. He was the second leading rusher and led the Bears actually with five touchdowns. So now Forte being tended to on the sidelines. First down from the 10 for Lindley getting a pass rush. And the pass incomplete flag is down. Try to get it to the fullback Anthony Sherman. First down at 15 at the five. Pass batted up in the air by Major Wright. Hey, the secondary dangerous, not only in punching balls out, getting tips at the line. I see Major Wright coming off the corner. Lovey Smith said, we're going to be a more aggressive in our blitz calls in this game. Put the pressure on the rookie quarterback, and they haven't disappointed. They've come after him. They've been all over the ball. Good sign for this defense that the turnovers, as we mentioned, number one in the league, but of late, they haven't been there. This is a dangerous area for the Cardinals because Beanie Wells lost the ball. No one really hit him, fumbled, and Zach Bowman fell on it for the touchdown. The defensive score for the Bears. Now it's second and 15 from the end zone. Lindley's pass is intercepted by Tillman, who walks in for the touchdown. Dangerous territory indeed for the Arizona Cardinals backed up against their own goal line. Now the ninth defensive touchdown for the Chicago Bears. And you know what? You can talk about a rookie quarterback, but that's a poor effort by Andre Roberts. you got to go compete for that football. You're leaving your quarterback out to dry. He didn't explode on the football. Tillman wanted it more. He went and got it. It looks bad for Ryan Lindley, but put that one on Andre Roberts. Ten-yard interception returned by Charles Tillman. And now Alindo Mare looking at Lindley, John Skelton. And now Hoyer, the fourth quarterback this year for the Cardinals, handoff to Stevens Howling. He gets a couple. So Hoyer, seeing his first action of the season, was claimed on waivers from the Steelers on December the 10th. Came in briefly with Pittsburgh after Ben Roethlisberger was hurt. Spent three years with the Patriots, but he was cut in August. He's an undrafted free agent. Three years from Michigan State. So that's the background on Brian Hoyer. See what he does with the Cardinals offense. Second down and seven. William Powell now to back. And Hoyer completes to Roberts. And Roberts getting the first down. Past the 36 to the 37, Lance Briggs on the tackle. Hoyer was just signed on the 10th of December, so a crash course on the offensive system of Mike Miller and Ken Wisenhunt. And we'll see how much he's been able to digest in that short time. And a first down on the 38.
Ken wins in Hunt's team, as you mentioned, starting so impressively, including a win in New England. 4-0, and and then the roof came in with nine straight losses, including a 58-0 thrashing against Seattle. Here is William Powell. And Powell to the 45. It'll be about three and a half yards shy of a first down. Jen Hale with an update on Matt Forte. Matt Forte has now had his ankle padded, braced, and wrapped well. He's fighting to get back in this game. He does not want to come out, guys. He keeps telling the trainers, I'm good, I'm good. They're having him do some sprints up and down the sideline. They're still continuing with evaluations at this moment, but from everything I'm hearing Forte say and do, he wants back in desperately. Question is, is it wise to bring him in with the playoffs on the line and a 28-6 lead and an incomplete pass by Hoyer? Intended for Michael Floyd, and it'll be third and three. Lindley making his fourth start of the year, won his first game as a quarterback last week, and still without a touchdown pass. Well, and there's a lot of questions here in Arizona. The head coach being one of them is Ken Wisenhunt going to still be here, but whoever is the coach of this team next year, they've got to find themselves a quarterback. That's that's clear. Is that Kevin Cobb? We'll see. Decisions to be made though. Third down and three. Hoyer off the hands of the intended receiver Roberts and it's fourth down. So now four quarterbacks and it's been a rough year for him but he has kept his composure, been encouraging, has been a class athlete. Armando Allen with the run and a first down for Allen. Allen who has a 46 yard Touchdown this year for the Bears gets 17 yards gets them out of trouble out to the 26 And they're gonna need Armando Allen or Cleo Bell someone to step up particularly if Matt Forte Is looking at a long-term ankle injury, but Allen sees the hole well right there in this Offensive line that has been much maligned is playing well today. have given Cutler a lot of time In the past game and been run blocking Extremely well. Former Tampa Bay Buck. And played his college ball at Notre Dame. First down at the 26. And here is Allen going off the left side. And Allen gets to the 30. Picking up four yards. And if you've been calling your friends watching the game saying, have you seen any numbers about this game? Any stats? Any graphics? And they said, no, I haven't. Well, we want to apologize because our graphic machine has been down. So we have not been able to show you normally what we would bring you up to date on the graphics of the game overall, playoff picture, individual performances so far, and we apologize for that. Under, under. Get out, Second down and six. Bears with four wide receivers, three lining up to the right. On the spread, here's the pressure. Here's Allen with the catch, and he's hit immediately. Darrell Washington with a good tackle. Prevented Allen from getting a first down. And not a good play, a great play by a great player. Watch Darrell Washington right here. And this is linebacker play. The ball's in the air, and then watch the finish. Just the explosion. This guy, a tremendous football player. Nine sacks from the middle linebacker position. He's been all over the field this year, over 100. And 20 tackles on the season. Tremendous football player. And now at third and five, Khalil Bell has come into the game for the Bears. They signed him this week, third time with the team. Short yardage guy, but Cutler will throw. And the pass is caught by Brandon Marshall, and he may have the first down. Peterson right with him. And that's the second time we've seen Peterson do a classic job against Marshall. That's just, that's textbook coverage. But Brandon Marshall, that's what he does. Again, 230 pounds. I watched him come into the league as a rookie. First day of training camp, he was talking some trash. I tried to knock him out. Darn near <laughs> knocked myself out and said, this guy's different. And he has been, and I'm proud of the young man because he's grown up a lot, become a leader in this league, along with a tremendous player. Good place for him is Chicago with the Bears. Cutler getting the rush, but gets rid of it. And the pass caught by Marshall. And his forward progress will be just shy of the first down. Pete Peterson on the play. Boy, those two have been great to watch, and you pointed out that early. Game break time, Patrick O'Neill. Hey, Dick, the Denver Broncos are well, moments away from their 10th consecutive victory. Jacob Hester, one-yard touchdown run. They lead the Browns 31-6. If Denver beats the Chiefs next week and Houston loses to the Colts, Denver has home field throughout the playoff. What do you guys think about that? Mm. 
I think Peyton Manning would like that very much. Here is Allen. And Allen fights his way to the first down to the 49. You know, Lovey Smith, he's been selling to his team. It's who gets hot at this time of year. And you look around the league, you see the Denver Broncos. You look at what Green Bay did, and they're getting healthy as a team, 55 to 7 over Tennessee. Team like Chicago, some things have to fall into place, but it's all about playing your best football at the right time. And the Broncos certainly are doing that. And what about the Seahawks? We saw them last yes. week, and uh, a lot of people think they're the sleeper. They won three in a row, and they finished with two home games, including a big one tonight against the 49ers. Redskins, another team. On a roll, hot right now. First down, Cutler. And on the middle screen to Kellen Davis, the tight end. And Davis wrestled down by Washington. Redskins have won six in a row, and they kept it going. The Green Bay Packers four in a row, and uh, those teams trying to get, well, at least the Redskins into postseason and keep hot. The Packers already clinched the NFC North. Second down and three. And off to Khalil Bell. And Bell will be tackled for a yard loss by Bonnie Holiday with help from Washington. Clock continues to run here in the third quarter. The Bears lead 28 to 6. They score two defensive touchdowns in this game. A fumble recovery in the end zone by Zach Bowman and Charles Tillman with a 10-yard interception that he ran in for a score and has the ball to prove it <laughs> keeping that thing third down and three Cutler and overthrowing Alshon Jeffrey the coverage by Greg Toller down leg is down on the line of scrimmage Killings decline fourth down first down for the Cardinals at the 20. Stevens howling off the right side. And picks up two. Lance Briggs is there. And you might say that uh, all the Cardinals want for Christmas is perhaps a quarterback who can throw. It's been uh, 24 quarters since their last passing touchdown. And it's been a long drought. And uh, one time, a great songwriter, one of the all-time legends, Irving Berlin, said, all they want for Christmas is snow. He wrote a song called White Christmas because he didn't have any snow here at the famed Arizona Biltmore Hotel, and he wrote it back in 1942, wishing there was snow, best-selling single of all time. Roberts breaking a tackle and getting a first down out to the 34. Missing the tackle was right, but a 12-yard gain. I got to act like it. What a player and what a class act he is. First and 15 in stride, pass caught by Larry Fitzgerald, and he gets into Bear territory, a first down. He caught four passes early, and it's been a while. He makes his fifth catch good for 24. And a nice ball by Hoyer, the play action, and throws a strike to Larry Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald brings it in and takes a hard hit from Anthony Walters, who's filling in for Chris Conte at the safety position. Five catches, 85 yards, and here is Stevens howling, cutting up field. And Israel Adonaje makes the tackle. And what about the great work of Larry Fitzgerald when after the season he does great relief work for the underprivileged? Talked about Riggs, who has scored two defensive touchdowns on interceptions. Tillman got his third today. Second down and seven. And pass intended for the tight end, Jeff King. And it'll be third down and seven with 2.14 remaining in the third. Talk about the quarterback position. Those quarterbacks, it hasn't been easy on them. They've been under duress all year. 52 sacks coming into the day, that the most in the NFL. The offensive line has actually played better as of late. He's Rookie tackles Potter and Massey have come in and actually stabilized the offensive line. Well, Charles Tillman wanted to get back in. He's back at cornerback on third and seven. And Hoyer goes down, and it's Julius Peppers with his second sack of the game. Peppers now with ten and a half on the year. And a 
A loss on the play of seven. Watch Peppers. Just a straight edge rush and then the ability to close. That's what the great ones do. And Peppers is exactly that, a great one. And he can't wait for it. But they're on their own one. Good play by the Cardinals special teams. Armando Allen barely gets out of the end zone. Dan Williams was right there. Allen, of course, has been in running back. Matt Forte injured. Really nice play by Dan Williams. He sheds the deep, the offensive lineman and darn near gets a safety. But back to that mi the military. We wish them a Merry Christmas and their sacrifice is so huge away from their families during the Christmas. We thank you and we salute you. Where would we be without it? Second down and ten. Here's Allen. This time has some running room enough to get past the five. Allen was uh, undrafted last year. Hails from the Miami area. Signed and cut by Tampa Bay. And he's been up and down with the Bears practice squad last year. But he's been on the varsity all year this time. And right here, look, you got to convert the third down. But if I'm Mike Tice, I'm trying to spread the football around. I'm trying to instill some confidence in a young kid like Alshon Jeffrey because he'll prove invaluable if they do indeed get to the playoffs. Third and five from the end zone. Cutler lets it go and trying to get it to Brandon Marshall. So it's fourth down. In cold weather, I just couldn't tackle or catch with them. Didn't do so hot without them. <laughs> Boyer completes to Roberts. In fact, you saw him with the sleeves on in practice, and you're wondering, what was he doing with them on? In the pregame, I yep. thought he duped us, and he went in and made the old switcheroo. Second down. And four. Here's William Powell, and he's not going anywhere, thanks to Nick Roach. For game break, Patrick O'Neill. Hey, Dick, well, the Minnesota Vikings uh, won very easily today versus the Texans, and all eyes, of course, on all day. Adrian Peterson still needs 208 yards to pass Eric Dickerson to become the league's all-time single-season rushing leader. For the Vikes to make the playoffs, well, if the Giants lose today, they have to beat the Packers next Sunday, and they are in. Look at the NFC picture, Atlanta clinched home field in Washington. Big win today, and what a matchup next week. Dick and John with the Cowboys for the Redskins. All right, thank you very much, Patrick. And here is Fitzgerald with the catch and the first down going out of bounds, covered by Tillman. Fitzgerald with six catches and 95 yards. The story for the Bears. Now, when Minnesota won today, the Bears needed to win to stay alive, but a giant loss, and they're down 27-7 to Baltimore. Bears will make the playoffs with a win at Detroit, provided Green Bay beats Minnesota. So the Bears, of course, still need help, need to win their last two games, and looking like they're going to be successful here. Pass underneath to Powell. How about that? The Bears fans need some help from their friends in Green Bay. <laughs> it seems right. like Green Bay has been that nemesis that continues to hold them down, but now maybe they can help them out. And, you know, you get in as a six seed, and you know what? We saw that with the Giants last year, winning a Super Bowl. Just get in the tournament, and that has been a mantra for Lovey Smith this week. Absolutely, and the defense playing like this, good things could happen. I think offensively they still have strides. If Matt Forte is hurt, that is a big blow to their chances. Second and seven. Boyer's pass incomplete. Fitzgerald was the target. And it brings up third and seven. Fitzgerald has six catches for 95 yards. Another thing, though, you see, you see Brandon Marshall with five catches, and the next most for the Bears today, Kellen Davis with two catches, and it's just been a, a problem. And you look at good teams in this league, the Denver Broncos, the Green Bay Packers, the Giants last year, they spread the football around, and that hasn't happened enough. But the Atlanta Falcons are another team that does it. The good teams have multiple guys with 70-plus catches. The Bears have a lot of Brandon Marshall and not much else. Marshall with 112. And the ball knocked away from behind and recovered by Hoyer. And it was Peppers who forced the fumble. He has two sacks as well. Excuse me. They have Julius Peppers as well. And I tell you what, this defense can play some offense. We saw it early in the year. They come in bunches. It went away. But what a positive sign. And Julius Peppers has been all over the field, as has 
Lance Briggs and Charles Tillman. Lovey Smith said it. Our stars got to play big today, and they sure have. They sure have. Peppers with three sacks of the four. And Zastadil kicking on the seven-yard line. Jay Cutler all the way at quarterback. Hands off to Khalil Bell. How would you like to be a youngster? And you love Christmas. And you happen to be growing up in a place called Santa Claus, Indiana. Well, that's where Jay Cutler was born and grew up through his teens. And he said they had a festival of lights. And he says, you know the mail that we get in Santa Claus, Indiana, for everyone who wants to write to Santa Claus. What a life for a young boy. And you know, the Cardinals also have a player where Christmas is a major factor as well. Second down and nine from the eight yard line. Early here in the fourth quarter. It's been the Bears all the way. Cutler. Running out of the end zone and will run out of bounds and get the first down. Well, the Cardinals have a player. Talk about the Christmas holiday. That's Darren College, their left guard, who is from North Pole, Alaska. So in this game, right a couple of days from Christmas, we have a quarterback from Santa Claus, Indiana, and a guard from North Pole, Alaska. What irony, huh? Santa Claus is winning today. <laughs> <laughs> right. And he can dance. Yes. <laughs> there are the two Christmas players here. First and ten Ready. at the 18. Khalil Bell. And Bell carries it out to the 23. Picking up five yards. And for those who have just joined us, Matt Forte. He's had a good day rushing over seven yards per carry, shaken up, and had to leave the game. So well, that right ankle get caught under the leg of Sam Acho, and Matt Forte has left the game and was walking gingerly as he did. Would be just a devastating loss to the Bears. We'll see. Right. They need him back. 12 carries, 88 Ready. yards, and a four-yard touchdown, Ready. plus a 36-yard run. Ready. Second and five. Here is Bell. Bell will edge his weight for two yards. Giants still trailing the Ravens 30 to 7. So the Giants troubles continue in that NFC East race. Dallas lost in overtime to the Saints today 34-31 but success for the Redskins over the Eagles and a big one for the Vikings at Houston. And Dick, I think you, I, everybody else kept waiting for the Giants to make their run and it looks like they won't slow do down, it this year. Down. They conclude against the Eagles next week on third down and three, lofting the pass to Alshon Jeffrey and covered by Toller downfield. So fourth down and Podlesh will come in and punt once again. Brian Hoyer in relief. Ryan Lindley, first down at the 30. Blair gets time, and this pass intended for Fitzgerald is incomplete. Well, it's almost that time of the year again. America, TV's biggest phenomenon. American Idol is coming back for an all-new season of talent and surprises. New judges, Mariah Carey, Keith Urban, and Nick Minaj join Randy Jackson and Ryan Seacrest on America's number one show, American Idol, Premieres Wednesday, January 16th on Fox. Julius Peppers, ninth time in his career he's had a three-sack game, never has had more. He's not going to get any on the sideline for sure. Second down and ten. Pass thrown to Roberts underneath. And he is stopped three yards shy of the first down by Nick Roach. You see the way Dick, and we've seen it throughout the game, you're going to catch the ball, but here comes that defense. And boy, it's, it's something awesome to watch. And you see opposing wide receivers, they think better about forging forward, and they get down in a hurry because this defense is a coming. And of course, uh, also a coming is Henry Melton. Mm -hmm. Perhaps uh, they expect him next week in the finale against the Lions. They got Geno Hayes and Tim Jennings back this week. And Brian Erlacher hasn't practiced since December the 2nd. Third down and three for the Cardinals. 
Pass is caught by Fitzgerald, but he'll be short of the first down. There is just what you were talking about, the definitive tackles. Nick Roach that time. Rod Marinelli talked about it. He said people think of blitzing as aggressive. We think of zone defense as aggressive. All eyes on the ball. The ball's thrown. Everyone breaks. It's an awesome thing when you get it going. And you know when you start seeing receivers get down as opposed to going for a first down, you've won half the battle psychologically. So now it's fourth and one for the Cardinals on their own 39. Players pass and first down Fitzgerald. And he fronted Tillman there and had position to make the catch. So Fitzgerald with a 16 yard here. And much like Brandon Marshall on the other side, you're talking about a big man in Larry Fitzgerald, 6'3, 220 pounds, and a tremendous athlete. Those are two great players. We've seen the matchup on the other side. This has been a tremendous matchup as well. Larry Fitzgerald going up against Charles Tillman. And he goes over 100, has 113 yards to go along with his eight catches. First down and the pass thrown underneath to Jim Dre for a minimal gain. Third time this season that Larry Fitzgerald has gone over 100 yards. And you know with the, you know, a, a quarterback who would have uh, been the likes of uh, some of the better ones in the league, it would have been a lot more than three. Second down and seven on the Bears, 44. Quick one and trying to get it to Floyd, but off the mark. That's an example of a, a rookie wide receiver, but also a new quarterback, and they just don't have the chemistry yet. Hoyer doesn't know where Michael Floyd's going to be. Michael Floyd doesn't know exactly the timing that Hoyer throws the football with, and that's the struggles you go through with a new quarterback throwing to a young wide receiver. Third and seven. Lawyers pass incomplete intended for Roberts. The covering was Kelvin Hayden, the nickel back, and it's fourth down. It was good for the Bears today, not so much for the Cardinals. Those are Jay Cutler's numbers, starting from the 20 yard line, and Khalil Bow carries for a couple of yards. Well, the story in the NFC East today. The Redskins now won six in a row, and they have the lead in the division. They beat the Eagles. Dallas lost in overtime at home to the Saints, and the Giants are getting plastered on the road in Baltimore, 33-7. to So Redskins finish with Dallas next week, and the Giants are home with Philadelphia. Redskins will be home to the Cowboys. Terrific job by Mike Shanahan pulling that team together. Their defense was porous early in the year. Jim Haslett has done a tremendous job bringing that group along. Second down and six. Pass is caught by Brandon Marshall. And down he goes two yards shy of the first down. Marshall with six catches on the day. And of course, Seattle, very quietly, nine and five on the year. They have two home games, but a big one tonight against the San Francisco 49ers, Colin Kaepernick, after the 49ers went east to play the Patriots and won, held on to win this game. And I'll tell you this, we are talking to Larry, with Larry Fitzgerald the other day and just talking about playoffs, and he said, let me tell you this, if Seattle gets in and they can host a game, no one's going up there and winning a game. He believes in them so much. It's so loud up there, difficult place to play, and as you mentioned earlier, the Seahawks are really clicking on all cylinders. They certainly are in the handoff to Khalil Bell. Meanwhile, these Bears will still have to win next week. They need help as well. Brian Hoyer, former Patriot and Steeler, starting from the 29 and the pass caught by Floyd. And the Bears don't let him get the first down. Picks up nine. Hoyer has Completed 11 of 17 for 105 yards. Ryan Lindley, 17 of 31. And an interception. And that was run in for a touchdown. Second down and one. Warriors pass is intercepted. And it's Kelvin Hayden 
Hayden with blocking down the sideline and finally goes down. Another turnover and the Bears feasting on it today. It's been a long while for them, but they've come back strong. There's Kelvin Hayden. Lovey Smith said not only getting Tim Jennings back, do we get a great player? Kelvin Hayden gets to slide back into his nickel position, and he makes the most of it. Another turnover for this Bears defense that needed the takeaways, and they've got him today. First interception of the year for Hayden. Thrown right in front of Fitzgerald, and now the Bears. You can hear the Bear fans. Let's go Bears, they're saying here yeah. in Arizona. First and goal. From the 10. Here's Khalil Bell. And Bell picking up one yard. Well, the defensive touchdowns, and it started with the first score of the game when Zach Bowman, actually Beanie Wells wasn't even hit. And Bowman scored, and then the pick six for Tillman. Tillman, his third touchdown of the year. The Bears got exactly what they needed. This is the recipe for success. They didn't disappoint today. Tillman, Bowman, now Kelvin Hayden. Didn't get in the end zone, but got another turnover. Three takeaways led to 14 points, and we'll see what they can do with this latest one by Kelvin Hayden. Well, the Bears needed a decisive win to turn their fortunes around for three straight losses in five of their last six and they have gotten it today second down and goal and here is bell and bell gets to the six yard line all right you look at this graphic and we've been without graphics much of the day so we got to do less with more so i'm going to try to help it out a little bit here we go last six games let's go to seven well that's not a good seven not up to a good start it's better we got two defensive touchdowns and I'm going to go out on a limb and say they win the game two and five in their last seven. There you go. Whatever it adds up to, it adds up to. Good job by the Chicago Bears. Who needs graphics when we have John Lynch <laughs> on the Telestrator? That shows why I got sent to handwriting school as a, as a youngster. Handwriting's on the wall. Hey. Third down and goal. From the six-yard line, the pitch to Khalil Bell. Bell gets down to the three, and it was Darrell Washington. Preventing Bell from getting into the end zone. Blocked. And picked up. And run by Justin Bethel. Bethel down the sideline. And he's going to get in for the touchdown. It was blocked by Adrian Wilson and Justin Bethel. The rookie from Presbyterian runs it in. So the Bears do allow a touchdown, but it comes on special teams. First down at the 45. Khalil Bell with a couple. Well, on January 4th, one of the best bowl games of the year is on Fox. Heisman Trophy winner and one of the most talked about players in the country, Johnny Manziel. Bell gets inside the 40, and the Cardinals will use their second timeout. Charlacker hitching to get back into action. Third down at four. Here is Bell and Khalil Bell, and he'll get enough for the first down. Perry Rhodes ran him there, and the clock continues to run with under a minute and a half nice go. effort by Khalil Bell Khalil Bell was going to be their short yards back coming in today with Bush hurt but get back to Brian Erlacher Lovey Smith did tell us if they're fortunate enough to make the playoffs game in which the defenses and special teams outscored the offenses here and the Bears will win and go nine and six the Cardinals five and ten so for John Lynch and Jennifer Hale, Dick Stockton saying so long. We now take you to the conclusion of the Giants and the Ravens.